I'm Reen Schwarzer, and you're listening to the Giant Sword Podcast. Microphones, activate! Welcome to this week's Giant Sword Podcast. I'm your party leader, Nick. Joining me as always is Shadow. What's up? And Taylor. Howdy. How's everyone doing? It's been, uh, how, how was your New Year's and Christmas? It was good. I came back to California, got to see you, got to play, have a game night on New Year's. That was fun. That was fun, yeah. Uh, and I introduced Connor to a hacked version of Bonamizy Tactics. He was kind of, he was like, yeah, he like, seems to be loving that. Yeah. <laughs> he was like, what? What's that? What's that? He lost two people in the first battle. That was cool. Oh, yeah. Two people yeah. died in crystals. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that was fun. I was hoping to have him on soon to talk about that, actually. But, you know, that's a future thing. Yeah. Always tricky to get him on. Mm -hmm. How about you, Shadow? How was your holiday? Uh, uh, It was uh, pretty quiet, actually. Um, Couldn't visit family because of the global bastard. (laughs) And I had to sit at home and just chill uh, by myself for the most part. Uh, I watched Wonder Woman 1984, and that was just trash. <laughs> like, one of the worst movies <laughs> I've ever seen in my life. Not even gonna lie. Like, if you guys seen, like, the old school, like, Batman movies, like, Batman Forever, Batman and Robin, it's in line with those. So That's what I heard. I heard it's, like, the Batman of, and Robin of the new DC movie. Yep. Is it that cheesy? It is that cheesy and terrible. Wow. The plot holes everywhere. Wow. It is a terrible movie. I don't know how DC fucked that <laughs> up so badly. Wow, that's uh, a shame. Man. Actually, that 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 watch that actually depressed me, put me in a depression during Christmas. I don't <laughs> know how that worked because it was so bad. I, I was thinking that like, I woke up, I was tired on Christmas morning. I said, like, you know what? Let me watch Wonder Woman 1984. That'll do it. That shit was just boring. I'm like, yo, they really want to like, like you know, stretch my logic to the fullest. Like they want me to suspend my disbelief so much. I could, I could, I couldn't do it. That movie was just stupid. <sighs> but yeah, other than that, it's been, um, it's been pretty chill. It's been very chill. Yes. Taylor randomly, I randomly get texts from Taylor and Connor saying, "Hey, let's let's hang out." Whoa! Oh, oh, Connor, Taylor's in, Taylor's in town. Okay. Yeah, because uh, I'm why well, I. I Nobody, everybody was busy one day, and I texted Connor. I'm like, "Hey, I'm in town. Do you want to hang out?" And he's like, "Oh yeah, I'm working. Come over at blah blah blah." And then he randomly was like, "We should do a game night again." I'm like, "Heck yeah!" So, you know, it's good old fashioned game night. That was fun. You know, what's funny. You know, the last time I visited him before all that, he was said the same things. Man, I really just want to have a game night or just hang out, play games all day. Reminisce. Nice. That's like that's exactly what we did. And then we realized we're old. <laughs> Yeah, you know, lately I've been uh, checking my hair in the mirror, and uh, I've got some grays coming in more than I'd like to admit. And I'm like, oh no, it begins. Well, you got grays? A little oh, bit. I mean, it's not man. like you kind of have to like go into the light and look at it, but uh, yeah. I mean, that's like one of my biggest fears, actually. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't mind getting older. It's, it's, it's getting gray hairs that I'm just, I'm terrified of. Why is that? <laughs> I don't know. It's like it, it. It just for me, it feels like the ultimate sign that you're just not young anymore. Mm. That you are just aging. Like there's just no, there's just no going back at this point. <laughs> See, I don't have, I don't have braids, but my hair's starting to thin. Actually, it was interesting for me because I thought my hair was going bad when I was like in my twenties, but now oh. it's like. It's like just as thick as it was as as it's always been. My brother's losing his hair. Oh, well, supposedly, but I I don't know. But I also like having an older brother because it gives me a metric of when my um when my gray hairs might come in. <laughs> See, I can't do that with my brother because my brother's completely different than me, and he's still he's his hair's still all you know he's pepper. He's starting to become he has a lot of grays. But that comes that comes just from having a family, I guess. Yeah, that's true. A friend of mine, <clears throat> a friend of mine, he's same age as me, but he has um he has like two gray hairs on his on his um beard. 
I guess it just comes from like his environment and him constantly not getting enough sleep and being stressed. That could be it. But yeah. I do yeah, not want gray hairs. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've seen it way worse. I've definitely seen people even my age or younger, and it's just like full on salt and pepper. And I'm like, man, what happened to you guys? But I think that I, I feel lucky that it's taken this long. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Blessed. Blessed. Let's uh let's go uh let's talk about what we've been uh if we've played anything lately. Like, I know like we finished Cold Steel 4 and it kind of dropped off the JRPG market. But I started picking up I picked up Shadow Hearts. I started playing that. And uh Taylor tried Legend of Dragoon. And remember the last episode, if you guys remember, I said, Hey Taylor, you should try out uh, Legend of Dragoon and see if you can even try it. We kind of challenged him if he could. Give us the result of that, Taylor. Give us the results. Yeah, well, I actually had, I, you know, instead of bringing my Switch to California, I brought my Vita, thinking, I'm like, I don't really have anything to play on my Switch, but Vita, yeah, there might be some old JRP. I had a bunch of old JRPGs on there. I had Legend of Dragoon, Final Fantasy VII. Um, I brought Persona 4 Golden. And luckily, both on Persona 4 Golden and Legend of Dragoon, I had files like a couple hours in, so I got past all the boring tutorial stuff. But... I started playing Legend of Dragoon, and the battle system's fine, but the story in that game is, like, so much worse than I remember. Like, the dialogue in that game is just so bad. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I just couldn't deal with it. So I got, I'm at, like, um, when you first get to the capital and you meet uh, Prince Albert and you go to Lavitz's mom's home, and then you leave and you go to um, that fort, and I like I play like an hour. I'm like, man, I can't do this. So I just booted up Persona 4 Gold. And I'm like, ah, yes, this is great. And I had a lot of fun with that. It's you're lucky you didn't get towards to the you know dragoon transformations because that's like that's that's really long just to watch those transformations and abilities just to do normal battles. Oh, it's pretty bad. By the way, Nick, I, I I don't know if you have your RTX thing up extra high or you're far away from your mic, but some it's like getting cut off or something. Or you're... Oh, you're, you're... I don't know what's up then. Um... Yeah. And that might just be me, but no, I, I... it's like the first chunk of your sentence usually gets cut off a little bit. Okay. Anyway. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah, it was... Uh, I thought I could do it. Couldn't do it. But now we just await the avalanche of games at the beginning of the year well probably not till february so ease nine will be the first one very excited for that yeah yeah how about you shadow um uh, let's see i've been going a backlog binge i started with trials of mana finished that game really simple game really um really easy game if you ask me um some of the people will tell you that it's tougher on hard difficulties i don't believe that um uh, after that, I went to Atelier Ryza 1. Oh. Finished that game up, finally. Oh, yeah, I saw that. Um, that was a really... It, it's a really good game. Um, when you get when you get into it, do all the alchemy and creating a whole bunch of stuff. And you really have to... You have to go out of your way to do extra stuff. Because if you just try to plow through it, you're not going to get the recipes you need to make higher equipment and higher items for the most part. Um, I tried to plot through it, but then I realized um, I don't have enough stuff, and my healing items aren't doing anything anymore. So I need to buckle down and freaking um, create more and grind to get my alchemy. Yeah, and grind basically. Uh, well, grinding it was really more farming in this game, but uh, it, it's a, it, it's really a fun game. Like people people will constantly tell you, oh, it's for the thighs and and whatnot, <laughs> for the Ryza. Don't get me wrong. That's why you play the game. That's why you're interested in the game. But <laughs> the gameplay is sound, and you stay you stay for the gameplay. Like I, t- I tell a whole bunch of people, like I may go in about this, you know, best girl and you know, thick thigh stuff, but like if the gameplay ain't there, I'm not there. I'm not playing. I'm not playing the game. But and Ryza d- does have really solid gameplay that you know I think a lot of people will enjoy. Yeah, uh, when I when I played it, it felt it, it was actually really enjoyable, way better than the other ones that I've played before, the other Atelier games that I played. Um, the battle system's nice. Uh, picking up things doesn't cost time anymore, so I'm like, oh, thank God. Yeah. Yeah, no time limit. Oh, that's the best part. Yeah. Uh, 
it, but the, some some of it's post game content because I was actually trying to do some of the post game content. It was just really bare bones. And then I even went as far because I like the game so much. I even went as far as looking at the DLC and maybe de- buying some of the DLC. But then I'm saying there's separate stories from the main story, so none of your progress from the main story carries over to any of the DLC scenario scenarios. So I'm like, all this alchemy I did, all these levels I gained, didn't mean nothing. I was like, nah, I'm good. I'm gonna stay away from this. And uh, there are some negative things about that, but nobody actually plays DLC, so nobody really knows. There's some bullshit going on there. Um, and right now, I'm trying to play um, East 8, trying to get that done before I, before East 9 comes out. I've been trying to play that game for the longest time, but when it first came out, it was just a disaster when it first came out. Even on PC, it was a disaster. Um, but now they finally fixed it up, and I'm trying to get back into it before... You know the games to really start trickling it out with Ryza Two and East Nine. I think those are the first two big ones of the year for JRPGs at least that are coming out. But, yep. Yeah. Yep. But I gotta ask the main question though, the question that's on everyone's mind: Did you mod Ryza? Oh, I, I mod that game out the ass. <laughs> that's the only that's the reason I play that that's one of the reasons I don't want to play Rise of Two out the gate because the mod scene is not gonna be there for a while. Uh, so you gotta let that build up for at least two months before like some worth mild mods be coming out. Yeah, um, I saw your video, the intro of your uh what are your JRPG hopes for the year or whatever. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Ryza was modded. She didn't she has like a skirt with her bikini. I took that off her, <laughs> and the other girl has like pale skin. I made her tan, and she has like a more, I guess you could say, covered up swimsuit. I took off the parts of her swimsuit that covered her up more, and I was like, yeah, that's even better. <laughs> so, yeah. So they're basically fighting in bikinis. Yeah, usually I don't like fighting in bikinis, but they look so good in bikinis. I'm like, okay, that's this works for me. I I kept them in the bikinis the whole game. I don't do that normally because I think like. Having bikini bikinis on really like takes away from serious moments and cutscenes. So I was like, "You guys look way too good. I can't, I can't take you guys out of these." <laughs> so, <laughs> so you know, that's how I went for the whole entire game. But uh, yeah, definitely looking forward to the mods that Rise of Two has. But I gotta wait. It's one of the reasons I don't want a review code because I'm like, if I do a review code, I'm gonna probably gonna play the game and I'm gonna drop the game. Now I'm gonna come back three months later and try to finish it. So I might as just wait. Yeah. Yeah. I gotta get back into it, but I don't think I am because I'm playing Shadow Hearts. Wait, have I told everyone I was playing Shadow Hearts? Yes, I did. Yes. You're the only person I know that really goes out of his way to play old school games. Like, what new games do you play sometimes? What are new games? Oh, man. <laughs> Fal- F- Falcom, and then if there's like a... Le- Falcom on Tails, and then if there's like some other landmark JRPG, that's pretty much it. Yeah. <laughs> right now, I haven't, I, haven't, I haven't been playing anything new. Nothing has piqued my interest to play. So, I don't mean, I'm barely playing Shadow Hearts. Like, when I get the time, I play it, but most of the time, I sleep. I work and sleep. That's what I do. <laughs> I hear you. It's not fun. I don't like it. No, sir. I don't like it. Nope. You know what we didn't talk about last year, though? Or our last episode? I'm with- What's that? Our game of the year. So, mm. so let's do a nice little segue into what were what was our favorite game of last year? Let's do JRPG because it's a JRPG podcast. So, our favorite JRPG of yeah. last year. Yep. And I'm gonna start with Shadow. Uh, this is easy. It's really no contest. It's Final Fantasy VII Remake. That game did a lot of things for the Final Fantasy VII that I didn't even know I wanted until I got it, especially with the ending. It opens up the door for a whole bunch of new things. Uh, it kept the myster- materials system intact, which was great. Uh, the combat was kind of a mixture between action and turn-based. It allowed you to pretty much control everybody for the most part. You had to keep switching if you wanted the best results. Uh, the graphics were outstanding. Well, there were some moments where the backdrops were a little bit um, cardboard cutouts and some of the NPCs were a little bit uh, not that detailed. But other than that, graphics absolutely outstanding for a PS4 game, base PS4 game. That was, it ran like clockwork. Can't wait for it to come to PC, especially for the mods. 
So um, the mods are gonna be beautiful. You just you, you, oh, you just want you, you just want the Tifa model. That's all you want. That's what everyone all. That's all. That's, all, that's, all, that's, all, that's literally all I want. That's all. I don't want nothing else. That's all what people want is just <laughs> access to the Tifa. <laughs> Just yep. give me the Tifa mods I want, and we're good to go. But yeah, Final Fantasy VII Remake, definitely um, a JRPG of the year. A follow-up was, um, well, runner-ups were Cold Steel 4 and Persona 5 Royal. Couldn't give it to Persona 5 Royal because it's ultimately the same damn game with a new scenario added at the end, which it's still a great game, don't get me wrong. It's just, it's mostly the same fucking game. I mean, you could say, you and, can say uh, the same thing about Cold Steel 4. Uh, <laughs> te- te- technically, yeah. Technically, yeah. You know, you know, you know. I guess you can say that. Yeah. I bet you you didn't. You, you, still, you, still for... you didn't hear my to do. Because I did that on the on the desk. Uh, yeah, Coastal Four still um was still a good game. The ending was a little bit, in my opinion, disappoint disappointing only because they didn't stick to one route. They could have just gave us one ending, and that would have been it. Just give us the. The true ending, I think it was. Oh uh, yeah, and just okay. That was it. You didn't need a normal. So ending. what I've learned, what I've learned, of all the Falcom games that I've played, with all the new ones at least, there are now regular endings and true endings. Every single one of them I've played: Ease Eight, Tokyo Xanadu, Trails of Cold Steel. They all have true endings. So I think that I think, that I, I think that's what they're just doing now. Fine, but it just feels like in this case they tried to have their cake and eat it too with that true ending and the normal ending. Because uh, honestly, the normal ending felt like what it should have happened. The true ending was just have your cake and eat it too. Oh, uh, yeah, it's true. Well, the normal ending, I hate. Uh, the normal ending was just like, oh, really? Really? Yeah. <laughs> Not that detail. It just kind of just ends abruptly. Yeah. And then the true ending, you actually get a boss to fight. It's like. What were you guys thinking here? Like, you literally try to satisfy everybody. Don't try to satisfy everybody. Just go with what you want to do. <laughs> but uh, I can't blame them. They were stuck between a rock and a hard place with the many characters that they decided to give us. So that was up to them. But yeah, still a good game. All the characters. Yeah, JRG of the year. Proper time remaining. Taylor, same thing, right? Yeah. Uh, I mean, my game, my game of the year and JRPG of the year was definitely 7 Remake. Um... I think for different reasons than Shadow. I think initially I didn't like the changes, but I eventually came around to them. But to me, I I was really surprised at how well they managed to bring these characters to life, like with voice acting and read. Some of them were redesigned and stuff like that. And I, I just enjoyed certain characters that I didn't enjoy before. Like Barrett was really just a caricature in the old game but now he's i feel like he has a fleshed out personality i really liked Aerith, but in the old game i didn't really like Aerith. you know like she just felt like uh like a story piece to move around like i i, I never really got connected to her you know in the way that i think they wanted players to but i loved Aerith in the new game she's so fun and the music was amazing um yeah i, I just it just hit me in the feels uh, more than any game that last year. Um, and as far as runner ups, uh, my number two is definitely soccer wars. I really, really liked soccer wars. And some people were saying it's not really an RPG at all, which may be true, but I don't care. I'm throwing it in there, throwing it in the mix. And uh, I also like trials of mana quite a bit. Trials of mana, like you said, shadow, it's pretty easy, but um it, it almost felt like a throwback game, kind of. It was like the design of it, you know, just like explore territory, fight a boss, story, r- rinse and repeat. And um, I don't know, I kind of liked that. There was something fun to that. And I really liked, the, the combat was pretty good. And I liked that you could, you know, you could pick your party at the beginning, which was kind of neat. So, um, yeah. And then, you know, honorable mentions to Yakuza and uh, Ew. Fairy Tale. Fairy Tale was... Ew. Surprisingly good. Did you say ew? <laughs> to both of those. <laughs> uh, I have a question about Trials of Mana for you. Yeah. Um, I think you've played a good amount of action games. You played the Yeast games, right? And you played yeah. Kingdom Hearts. Mm-hmm. Uh, you played Tales of games, obviously. Yeah. Okay, so which of those games, like, compared to Trials of Mana, like, where would you put Trials of Mana on a difficulty curve to those games. 
Let's see. So if we did Kingdom Hearts, Tales, E, I mean, probably at the bottom for sure. At the bottom, exactly. There's only one. There's like <laughs> one really, really hard boss out of nowhere, and then the rest of the game is pretty easy. Exactly. Like you think? I, I know you don't play games with the hardest difficulty, but which of those games would you probably have the most hard time beating on the hardest difficulty? You think? Uh, probably Tales. Um, okay. Exactly. Okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we're and again trials of mana would be where yeah i mean if i were to rank them uh, for those top to bottom it'd probably be for me it'd be tales kingdom hearts ease and then trials of mana and i only say ease because i have like completely mastered ease eight i mean i beat that game probably a hundred times because of the speed run so i know those mechanics in and out um but yeah, so what kind of, it's okay. what Kingdom Hearts are we talking about here? Are we talking about old Kingdom Hearts or Kingdom Hearts three? Oh, about yeah, exactly. See, I, uh, that was all I was about to add, but like old Kingdom Hearts anyway, because Kingdom Hearts three ain't shit. Um, but I'm trying to get through to one person who swears Trials of Mana is like the it's like a hard game. I'm like, no, it's not hard. You just are just proud of yourself because you beat it on the hard. Oh, you beat it on one of the hard difficulties. It's not a hard game at all. <laughs> and they're trying to convince me to play the game on a hard difficulty. I'm like, it's not, I'm not doing that without some type of compensation. But yeah, yeah come you on, just Pelvic, pay points. him, pay him to do it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I heard the H, I heard that podcast. She, wasn't, she didn't want to pony up the dough. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm just saying, like, your accomplishment is not that big of a deal. But anyway, I, I don't want to talk about that. I'm just I, I just need to reassure myself <laughs> of that. So. Yeah, I mean, there's that there's that one boss. It's like a gate or some. I don't know how to explain it. It was yeah, like up, up against the wall, and it was like really hard for some reason. Yep. But the rest of the game was super easy. That one was hard. I even I even talked to her about that one. I said that one makes no sense. That boss is ridiculously tough. And if you yeah. don't realize there's an item outside the room to so you can grab and use it against it, you're gonna have a hard time. And I did it. I did it with the item. I did it without the item. But that boss made no sense. But yeah, yeah that game is just overall easy, no matter what difficulty you put it on. Anyway, continue. Let's yeah. continue. <laughs> you want you want a difficult game? Play a Tales game on like uh, Inferno. Well, duh. Uh, <laughs> just just on a harder difficulty for like two years there's so many freaking difficulties in that in tales games yeah uh there's it's like normal second and then hard do it on hard i think i've like yeah I, ever, I think ever since tales of exilia i've always had to bump up the difficulty at least once because normal was way too easy for me this is uh there's there are moments in the tales of destiny remake where you just you would not block correctly and then the enemy will just combo and kill your entire team just bam bam bam, bam and it's like okay Okay. See, I meant the Okay, days. game. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> uh, for me, the game of the year... I don't want to say Final Fantasy VII. It's not for me. <laughs> uh, gotta be Cold Steel. I right? think, like, for a personal reason, it's Cold Steel. Cold Steel 4. Okay. Cold Steel 4, it's like, it's finally an end. It's ending. It's over. Finally. Could finally, except Pajamari is right around the corner. But it's not. <laughs> but it's not Cold Steel though. It's yeah. It's different. I wonder what they're gonna trans. What that title is gonna be translated to? Like, I don't know what that means in English. Cold Steel Five. <laughs> I mean, maybe for simplicity's sake, they might just do that. Uh, uh let me ask you. Um, are you are you good with the Cold Steel formula? Like, are you gonna go into Hajimari? Like, you're okay with it? Like. Yeah, because me personally, I'm just tired. I'm tired of it. I'm tired of the battle system. I'm tired of the graphics. I'm tired of the same characters. I was like, yo, it's over. Like, let's just move <laughs> on. We had these for what nine games or something like that. Like, yo, it's just move on. A lot of people are upset that the next mainline game, I guess, is going to action. Me, I low key welcome it. Like, I'm I'm done with this. I mastered this battle system. I mastered the court system. I know what to do. Let's. Get something different in there. Uh, for Hajimari, uh, I do not like. I don't mind it because Hajimari is just going to be one big lore dump. That's all. Yeah, that, like, that's like, like it's yeah, yeah. This is the Tales Trails in the Sky three of yeah, Cold Steel. So 
that, I mean, it has the stuff doors and everything i think i i'm pretty sure it does i'm i'm uh, oh it I'm does on, it does i'm on a, oh, I'm on, oh. I'm on a oh, media or like an info blackout but i did like i did see like a, a comment saying that there were star doors in it i don't know if it's true but it oh, seems like it is it seems like it's just gonna be that it's just gonna be a lore, lore dump I don't want to play this. And game. then I, <laughs> and I think it's going to be. Let me ask you guys a question. Yeah. So. Okay, Taylor. Taylor. Uh, Taylor. Yeah, internet. Internet glitched out for a second yeah. there. Um. Okay. So anyway, no, I was going to ask you. So speaking of Star Doors and whatnot, do you think? So I've played Sky, and we'll get to my video in a second. But having made that video i kind of don't want to go back and play sky one and two is can you just skip three is three necessary the, okay so the trails in the sky story ends in two so it, it's the second one that's where it ends uh the uh -huh. uh, third trails in the sky the third is a story specifically made for kevin which you'll learn about i don't know if he's in one but you'll learn about in two uh, he might have been hinted at it one. It's been a long time since I last played it. And it's just like a big lore dump. Like, it literally is a lore dump where you do the main story of Kevin, but then everything else, all the Star Wars are, and everything, are all stories in the world and past, present, you know, mm. of Zamaria. That's weird. So, it is, it's just... It's, <laughs> <here>. <laughs> You hate this term, but it's a world building game. Uh well then I'll just totally So you don't you don't you don't you don't, you don't you don't really need to play it, but it's like if you're really really uh interested and into the Zemeria and all the stories of the trail series, you'll like it. You'll enjoy it. Yeah, exactly. And I and like I, I've been saying that you can probably skip third. Just go on YouTube, watch the Star Doors, watch like three Star Doors, and that's about it. <laughs> and that's about all you really need for third, unless you really enjoy. Kevin. And, uh, yeah, unless you really love Kevin and you wanted to learn his his yeah. backstory and everything. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, because it, it, the Star Doors give you gives you hints and give you hints of stuff in the crossbow crossbow art and future stuff in the full seal arc like it gives you different like it's like oh oh there's this like the you know the sad door i think it's number 15 i said you know the really dark door that mm -hmm. everyone talks about yeah yeah that's yeah. Um, mm -hmm. that's, that's for cross spell yeah and then there's a door where it's a uh, olivier olivier yeah you do that door olivier, olivier is uh declaring a war on someone let's just say that and then there's a door about a guy that works at an item shop, but you won't meet him until Cold Steel Four. And he says two things, but man, that door. I swear to God, forward. I know you're, I know you're joking, but that there might be a door like that. I'm not even lying. No, no, no. Okay. And you don't care. That, 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 <laughs> that door, the door that he's joking about, is the Gambler Jack one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh wow! I love, I love how my door. cynicism is. Came to be true. That's hilarious. There's a it, 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 the yeah. There's a door about. Okay, so here we go. There's a, there's like a books you could there's books you could read called Gambler Jack, and and it's just you could find them across the world. I forgot which game it's in. Is it? It's oh, it's in Sky. Duh. Um, and for some reason there is a door which is like a story in. It's like that story in the Gambler Jack story. And when I was when I, I never read I never read the Gambler Jack stuff. So when I saw the Star Door, I'm like, "The hell is this shit? <laughs> What's going on? Exactly. What is this?" <laughs> it's like it, so it, it's like it breaks up the gameplay. I was so it's like, confused. I'm playing the story. I'm playing the story of Kevin. I'm minding my own business. Then I go to the Star Door, and these Star Doors are long. They're like a half hour to an hour long. It's like what the fuck? I'm like, I just want to play the game. Yeah, it, it was it was very. It was like, what what is this? Just like uh, there's a. There's a star door, which is it becomes a arena, which is which is awesome. I love the arena, but it's just like a side story where the characters go into an arena. 
and they fight people. It's stupid, man. I'm sorry. I, I, I think it's stupid. Uh, I think, like, hell, tra the Trails fans, they might love it. I don't care, man. I just think it's... And then, then the main characters, they don't react to these Star Doors. It's like that Star Door 15 that we talk about, like, Joshua and Estelle don't have a reaction to seeing that? Like, are you serious? Yeah, so it's... it's like, what the... It's just... It's, it is a game meant for the fans. That's all it is. Like, all the Star Doors yeah, are just yeah, for yeah. the fans. And that's all it does. It has nothing wow. and it has nothing to do with uh, what you're playing. So it's cool. Okay, good. But at the same time, it's disconnected. But those are what those are those are what those games are all about. So back to Cold Steel Four. <laughs> um. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I to answer your question, Shadow. Yeah, I'm. I, I'm looking forward to Hajimari, and Cold Steel Four is my. Game of the Year because it's finally the the five year series is finally over. No more Reen. No more no <laughs> more uh, going after Sarah, who was the best girl, by the way. And Ball. <laughs> <laughs> she gave the best kiss. I watched all of them. Best kiss. Oh my Toa 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 was a good one too, but. Mm. But yeah, it's 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 a it's a heartfelt like when I saw that ending, the end like the tr the credit scenes where it's all the pictures and everything. It's mm. funny because that scene that's going on in the in all those pictures was hinted at in Trails in the Sky the third. <laughs> it's like that's where that whole thing started, and I was like, oh okay, well I got I'm glad to see all this payoff finally. Ten years later. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it was fun. Uh, I did not like the final, <laughs> the final, the final scene where you look at the girl that you're that you're the wife who you picked, right? It's a picture of you and her on his desk, mm -hmm. and you, you get a he gets a text. Taylor, Taylor. He gets a text, and it looks and it says uh, the name on it. And he goes, "Ha!" Huh, ignores it and goes. <laughs> And it walks through the door. <laughs> and I'm like, I want to see what that text says. Come on. I'm not sure if he ignores it. I think, oh, he, yeah. says, he, I think he says, like, I'm going to meet up with the person. No, he goes like this. He, he pops up and he goes. I'm like, okay, what did he press? Was there a picture there? Was it a lewd? What is it? Yep, center nudes. He sent, sent him nudes. Probably. I was also very happy to kick Elisa to the curb. It's like, get out of here. You're not, you're not part of this. Uh, I feel sorry you know, for that. Uh, oh, yeah. Well, I'll go, we'll go deep into the Cold Steel 4 stuff and ending and stuff on uh, in the spoiler cast, which we'll hopefully do soon. But yeah, my runner up, uh, I really like when I played Persona 5 Royal. It felt like I was playing Persona Five over, like for the first time over again. I don't know mm -hmm. how I forgot a lot of this stuff. Like, because when I was playing it, I was like, "Was this in the original? Was this not in the original?" Oh, I'm so. It's like it felt like that was like the whole game for me. But I, I, I looked it up, and most of it was in the original. But for some reason, I forgot it. Um, one thing is for sure is they did re redub and change some lines in the game, so they made things make more sense. Because I remember in the, you know, at the end of the game, you could talk to all the people, you know, they'd say your goodbyes. Um, so Kawakami, of course, I picked Kawakami. So I went to her before she was like, and uh, the original Persona 5, she was like, uh, I'll clean your, she said, she said, the voice actor sounded like this. She's like, I'll clean your room for you anytime. That's exactly how she said it. And I was like, that's an awful thing to say. I don't care. <laughs> And the royal one, she's like, she says like, D don't forget, just call. And it's like, don't forget, or um, call me, call me, and I'll be over to see you at any time, like real lovingly, like something like that, right? He says that's something lovingly, which makes sense because you're freaking, you know, going out with her. And I was like, okay, much better, <laughs> much. That's one of the places where I recognize the dubs. So, they improved it, Taylor. So when you play it, and you don't remember most of the stuff. You'll like, you'll enjoy it. Man, I don't know when I'm going to get around to that game. If you get around to Golden, you get get around the Royal. 
Uh, I suppose. Yeah, it's about I want to. I want to replay it. It's just like a hundred hours, and like, goddamn. <laughs> just, just think about it this way: it's not a hundred and fifty hours, and the cutscenes aren't like Eternal Sonata. We must do this, and the camera is like panning really slowly. What are you talking? Cold steel, <laughs> cold steel cutscenes. Oh yeah, the cold steel cutscenes. Yeah. <laughs> because you don't like how slow they are. Which is a valid point. They are very slow. Thank you. So, we talked about our game of the years. Mm -hmm. Now let's talk mm -hmm. about our most anticipated game. It's coming out this year. Taylor, I'll start with you. Who do you want? Oh, what? Which game are you most looking forward to? Uh, that for sure has a release date. Um, probably... Ease nine, um, you know I sped run the crap out of Ease eight. I eventually beat that under two hours, and I really liked Ease eight a lot. So I'm really excited to see what Ease nine has in store. And it seems like most of the mechanics are the same with like the flash guarding and the flash. Uh, I think it's flash move, flash dodge, or whatever. That stuff. Uh, all the new abilities look really cool. How like one character can run up the wall, and one can see through walls, and one can break walls. So. I it just looks really cool. Um, I've been listening to one of the songs almost every day for a long time because I have this like Falcom rock mix. Mm -hmm. um, it's like when I'm working or I'm editing a video when I don't need sound or something like that. So I'm like, ah, I'm very curious to finally put a moment to that song because I'm like, yeah, it's like super pumped up and fun and rocky like most E songs. Is it like Sunshine Coastline? Uh, it's not like that. Let me find... I have that playlist probably right here. That's Did you play like, the demo? No, I purposefully am not playing the demo because I don't want to play demos anymore because I just I would rather go in not knowing anything because whenever I play a demo, I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah I already played the demo of this. Um, so, I mean, what, what what did you think of the demo? Not that it was fine. It just, it, 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 it just feels like yeast. That, that That's all. It just... That's I don't think the games have done much to change over the years. Like... Like it's besides the exploration that they're adding to this one more vertically, which doesn't do much for me. Like I, I don't really care about. Oh, I get to jump vertical along w walls and you get to look through what that, that, that doesn't do nothing for me. Mm. <laughs> like, but uh, it's just just ease at this point. You know, for me, I, I'm like such a hypocrite when it comes to games because there's some where I'm like, oh, it's just like the same game four games in a row. But then if I like a formula, I'm like, just don't change it, just keep it the same. And I like what they've been doing with ease, so. I just give me another one of those, and I have rock and guitar music. Yep. So this song is called "Glessing Way." I don't know what that means, but it's it's awesome. Uh, yeah, ease. Um, I have my list here of all the JRPGs coming out. So um, Persona Five Strikers for sure. I know that some people don't count it. I definitely count it as a JRPG. So I'm looking forward to that. Um. Tales of Arise, obviously. We don't know when that's coming out, and we don't really know much about it, but that looks really good. Uh, Rune Factory 5. Uh, I'm, I'm so glad that like these farming sim games are like in vogue again, and that a lot of people are making them, and they're, and they're good. But aren't you worried that they're oversaturating the market with them, and they're going to go away again? I don't know. Um, I mean, I only play a small handful. It's like Stardew Valley, Story of Seasons, Rune Factory. There's like so many... like um. My time in Porsche and all that type of stuff. Like, I haven't tried those. But, I mean, you to me, there just weren't, there weren't any for such a long time. So, for me, it's like, okay, well, if I ever don't like one, at least I know there's this, like, backlog that I can go back to and try. But, um, you know, I liked uh, the Friends of Mineral Town remake, <clears throat> the, the Pioneers of Olive Town, the new Story of Seasons looks cool, Rune Factory 5 looks cool. Um, I have to say, Taylor, your 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 gaming your gaming taste makes absolutely no sense. I like, you, you know like, you, you like farming <laughs> simulators in which you just literally go up to something, press a button to get three items, and you do that all the time. But you can't stomach a a side quest in Cold Steel in which the I, the, <laughs> the manager of a shop wants you to go for full of light bulb or something like that. That don't make no sense to me, bro. I'm, like, I'm sorry. I, just had to I, like, I like how Shadow has finally realized. 
<laughs> Taylor's face makes no sense. That's right. You can't pin me down. We've okay? been saying that for <laughs> ages, and it's just like, yeah, can't can't do it. You he'll like one thing, and then for some reason, in a different game, you'll hate that same thing. It just doesn't make sense. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And then of the games that we know for sure are coming out this year, I guess Scarlet Nexus would be the last one I'm really excited about. Um, obviously, if Final Fantasy 16 comes out this year, which I doubt it's gonna, um, that would shoot right up near the top. But uh, yep, Ease 9 right at the top for now. Ease 9. Yep. Shadow, how about you? What the? Oh, yeah, Shadow. Uh, so I have a couple of games. Uh, so I'm looking forward to the sky is six. Mm, yeah. uh, really, I'm nervous about that game because the more I look at it, the more, first of all, the UI just looks like they ripped it straight from the sky of five. They really didn't make much of a difference with the UI, even though it's been how many years? I don't know. Since the sky of five, 2015, probably it's got the same damn UI, yeah, the same, da- uh, same sound, and the same damn music from the first yeah. one. So it doesn't really matter, right? That, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, it, it's moving to 3D, which is okay. I'm starting to warm up to that idea, but if it's on Switch, I got a I got a feeling the performance of, of the game is going to suffer if it's on Switch. Only on Switch in the states because it's on it's on PS4 also in Japan. So we don't know what's happening with that. Yeah, that's so weird. I wonder what happened. Yeah, it's it's weird because the, I think the Sky was selling a lot on Switch, and they want to make sure it continues to sell a lot on Switch. But, you know, the PS4 install base in, in the West is huge. So I don't know if they're going to make it available on PS4. Are the Desk uh, Gaia games on PC or they're not? Uh, most of them are. I don't think the Sky at 3 is. But I think the rest of the series is on Hopefully PC. Hopefully 6 will come. Yeah, I think, oh yeah, it'll, it'll definitely um, be on PC. But I'd probably not like, you know, day one. It'll probably be like the Sky at 6 complete. Oh, yeah. And now it'll be on PC or something like that. Um, Shin Megami Tensei 5. Hmm. I'm pretty sure that's coming out this year. They said it was coming out this year. It could get delayed. I don't know. And we still haven't seen any gameplay yet as of, you know, this date. But, um, I'm pretty sure it's going to be a great game. Uh, Tales of Arise. Looking forward to see how they change up the Tales of formula. Hopefully, this Tales of game is the breakout success that the Tales game needs. To not stay afloat, but I, I guess maybe stay relevant. Because I don't hear a lot of many people talking about Tales of that much as of late so hopefully this game it does it it's only uh, trails they only talk about trails now not tales yeah exactly because <laughs> i think this hysteria really messed up the series sure um did. uh looking forward to rise of two only for the mods not not really but <laughs> 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 not really. uh grand blue fantasy relink oh wait that's coming out in 2022 i don't know, understand that <laughs> Um, Neo, the world ends with you. Oh my god, I really want to see how this game does. If anything, I want it for the soundtrack because I think the soundtrack, like the first world ends with you game, had the best soundtrack probably right next to Persona 4 to me. Uh, let's see, I think that's like really anticipating. That's really about it. Maybe Fantasy Star Online 2 New Genesis, but I get the feeling I'm gonna play that game for like a week and then drop it so. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Not looking forward to Hajimari no Kizuki, but I'm still going to play it. But yeah. Man, you guys in your lists. I don't know how you do it. <laughs> well, I had to make a list of the JRPGs coming out in 20, 2021. So that's why I had it all ready. <laughs> um, for me, there's only one game that's on my mind that I'm looking forward to. Can you guys guess what it is? Rune Factory 5. Nope. T- there Tales you go. Of Tales of the Rise. No. <laughs> <laughs> that was my most anticipated game. Um even though we just seen like a sliver of it, I saw the first trailer of Zysteria and I still bought that game and I enjoyed it. So I'm pretty sure Oh, you enjoyed it. Oh, okay, I'm about to say. I was like we because a lot of people will tell you otherwise about Tales. Tales and Zysteria. guess what? They're wrong. <laughs> I have the pictures. I have wrong. I have the pictures that are, a lot of people like it. I got hugged. Because I wore a Soul Ray costume. Yeah. You know, a lot of people are saying good things about Tales of Hysteria. You know, one person even told me, you know, Tales of Hysteria, it's the best game ever. People are playing it like no, but no other game they've ever played in history. It's, it's one of the best you games. You need ever. to do the voice to get it right. Oh, you you need to do the voice. 
Um, like I, I thought Tales of Stereo. I'll just say I thought Tales of Stereo was good, but I'm definitely not gonna defend it if somebody says it's bad. Oh yeah, I mean, like t- Taylor's gripes totally make sense. They was like they do. <laughs> Everyone's like, I get it. Um, the I, uh, they say that Tales games don't really change much. I I like I don't agree because every Tales game is kind of different in a way, but. It is a basic JRPG. It's just gonna. It's a standard JRPG that you're gonna get, but like the the mechanics are always different, and the world's always different. So, it's just I I don't know why people think it's the same game over and over again. I mean, one has the friendship is power, and then one is <laughs> I'm gonna kill all you because of what you did. Yep. So, people sleep on Basaria. <laughs> Uh, uh, root first scenario is okay. You, yeah, I mean, it's 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 uh, it's, uh I think it's a kind of, I think Berseria was kind of a slow burn at first. It was very it's like it was nice at the beginning, and then but then it really kicks up in the middle of the game. You only have to play for it like you know sixty hours, Taylor, and then it gets really good. Ah, oh, finally, okay. <laughs> uh, another game I'm looking forward to, of course, is Rune Factory Five. You can't go wrong with Rune Factory Five. I mean, they can mess it up. They can mess it up, but I always enjoy those. I really hope this game is good because this series has been what dead for how many, for how many years now? Five. It's been dead for a while. Oh, it's been quiet for a while. No, it, it's been it's been dead. It died. It it, it died in when it released on 3ds. <laughs> It's like when they released Root Factory Four, I got it. Did we? Did you get it as well, or was this me? Yeah, no, I got it. It was the best selling one, yeah. if I remember right. And then they closed exactly. The and we're like, what the hell? Mm. It was so because it, like, it was so <laughs> awesome. And then I bought like all the old ones. Uh, the third third one is good. Second one is super archaic. First one is probably even more archaic than that. So it definitely improved. And uh, the fourth one is the best, and it, they re-released it, so a lot of more, a lot more uh, people could play it. Just play it on Switch if you're into farming simulators and uh, dungeon crawlers. So that's what, exactly what it is, and waifu simulators. So, mm-hmm. or husbands, husband do assembly simulator. Yeah. <laughs> you do either. Either. Uh, but that's all that's on my mind right now is those two games. Of course, that's going to change when they start coming out and you keep talking about it. I just wait. You know, I'm not hyped. You know me. I'm just not hyped on anything. I'm just a blank slate until I play it. Then I freak out. And then I tell you that you got to play this game. It's the best game ever made. It's Persona 5 Lite. And it has a high school setting and it fits exactly everything you like. And I know you'll love it, Taylor. And then he rips out my heart and stops on it. So, yeah. That's what I like to do. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Thinking of uh, speaking of uh, stomping on my heart, <laughs> let's uh, let's talk about the video that you made. Mm, all all right. right. So Taylor has finally made <laughs> the video where he gives his thoughts on Trails of Cold Steel, which he's given plenty of times on the podcast. So if you know what his thoughts are on the podcast, uh, you've already watched the video pretty much. This is all for his fans on his youtube channel that for some reason have not followed us here but mm-hmm. yeah so taylor how did that how did that video pan out for you um you know honestly at the beginning like when it first came out i was like up oh, five lost five subscribers but then as the day went on it kind of bounced out um i still don't know specifically how many subscribers i lost or gained on that video it takes a couple days for the analytics to come through um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm just looking at the watch time. And like, when I say that, like, I don't like cold steel, there's like this precipitous drop off. <laughs> it's just like, I lost like 10%, 15% of the people watching the video. I'm like, oh, fuck this. I'm not watching this. Um, but I gotta say, generally speaking, the comments were like respectful. They're like, ah, oh, you know, some of your points are valid and I don't agree with you, but I respect that you, this, this is how you feel. But I, you know, normally I try to reply to every comment, but some people are writing like these novels about why they like cold steel and why I'm wrong or, you know, going point by point or whatever. So I'm just like, 
it already has 200 comments and i'm like i can't reply to all those that's too many welcome to getting a big channel <laughs> yep you know i've tried usually in the morning i try to go through them or even at night i try to go through and reply even if it's just an emoji or like oh thanks for the comment or something but i just nope not on this one <laughs> But you guys both watched the video, yeah. right? Everything I it's like I already knew all this. It's like, yeah, I get, I get it. Yeah. But I I used examples. I know before I would just sort of make a point, but I didn't really ever back it up with an example. So did the example and evidence at least kind of make sense, sort of? Kind of. Like I get your points, but it's funny because you talk about I don't even know what the main story is in Cold Steel Four or Cold Steel One. And you totally forget, yeah, you totally don't mention the terrorist cell that's like plotting behind the back of every every uh, field study that's always that's there's always some something going on there and that's the whole story is who's who's C and S and all these people and then that storyline ends when the next one actually starts when everything starts going crazy but would you not also agree that those story bits of the terrorists, they happen so infrequently throughout the game that it's like hard to even like keep track of what's happening because they don't show up that often until like the very so, end. So, yeah. So I get like the first, I, as you always say, it's like you have to play like 30 hours before it gets good. Um, up until uh, the Nord Highlands, which is chapter uh, uh, Field 33, that's when it starts, they, they start appearing a lot more. And I just remember in the chapter five and chapter six is when they're like, the field study is not even a thing. It's all them. You're like, I uh, like when you're in Roar, I just remember that chapter and it's like, oh, I did the field study. But then there's like another like five hours of terrorist stuff. And it's like, oh man, this chapter's a lot going forever. But yeah, it's not all just happy go lucky. You know, I like your cycle, though. It's where it's school day, field study, <laughs> whatever. Again, his taste makes no sense because he can farm in a game <laughs> over and over again, but he can't do that in a, in a trials game. So. Well, he did play. He, did, he yeah. did only really play the first one and those bonding events, especially the beginning ones, are usually just like ahead. It's like it's the visual novel style, which is like they do something and then it goes into like the two head the busts and they just talk to each other. Those were the bonding events at the beginning. And then they start and then they start getting more robust when you get into better bonding events. So I see his point there. So see I just make all kinds of good points. No. Not really. No. But okay. no, no, no. <laughs> but would you also not agree that like Cold Steel One's main purpose is to set up the other three games, more or less. It's like not filler, but it's like a, almost a prequel. It's not of. the third. It's not. It doesn't set up the three games. It sets the next game because Cold Steel One and Two are set. That's like the first. That's what Cold Steel should have been. I think Cold Steel Three and Four are a completely different game, a like completely different series. I heard. And, I thought they heard. I heard at some point they wanted to make one and two this the, like one game, but it was too big that they had to split it up. Maybe I'm wrong. I just, it's just like three is because three starts out like it's resetting, right? Oh, there's a new class seven mm -hmm. and you go to you. I forgot what they're called. Case studies. There's something different. They're they're different. Like they're like field studies, except quick. And and um and then it, they completely forget them in like the end of the game. But it's a completely different story. It's like it's the story is the ending of the second one. It's just, it starts off at the end of the second one because yeah. I'm keep trying to remember the second story, the second because it's so crazy, not really crazy. Uh, uh, the vermilion, the vermilion uh, thing, the crimson. Oh man, there's so much shit that goes on in that game. But yeah, you should really like you don't have to play if you want to get the Cold Steel experience, the original Cold Steel experience. All you have to do is play one and two. Two, I'm gonna say this is this this is gonna be controversial, uh, controversial, but I think two is better than four in a cl like a closing statement, like a closure. There is a cliffhanger, but it closes right. Uh, there's good closure to that that story. 
and it has a <laughs> when you beat the game you have memories and you can rewatch all these memories that you have Pulse Steel 4 doesn't even have that Pulse Steel 4 doesn't have you can't go back and watch all the bonding events that you had you can't watch the the special event you had at Michelin but Cold Steel 2 had it so yeah you should you should try Cold Steel 2 because you know what happens in one but yeah, and Cold Steel 2 is not as formulaic, right? Kind of. It, it, no, it, it is. Yeah, They're it kind of is, but the formulaic, the formula changes in both acts. So the first one is about, okay, I'm going to, finding your friends. That's the first right, one. Yeah, yeah, I knew that. Yeah. First part. And there's an awesome intermission. Yeah. There's an, like, the intermission so, that's a, really cool. I love that intermission. And then the third one the next act is about you exploring a certain part of Erebonia. You can explore areas and you go to these shrines that you need to do. And then those shrines story, like when you do complete shrines, story events happen and you still have to find, you still have to explore the world and find stu like students, other people. So it's a little more open, hmm. but it is formulaic still. Like I enjoyed it. Like I really enjoyed too. Two was awesome. And you can pick your party from the beginning, Taylor. Oh, that's good. Well, you have to after hey, you. He ain't interested. He ain't gotta play two. Yeah, I'm He's not gonna not, play no. it, but I, I have a much better chance of playing Sky uh, and Sky Two than. Well, I already beat Sky One. You've already beat Cold Steel One. The problem. Yeah. the The problem with Sky One is I played it right when it came out on PSP, like. 11 years ago and then it took forever for a second chapter to come out and then by the time it came out i was like i just didn't care anymore see when when uh when sky first came out when he played on the psp twitter wasn't a thing and now this is a post twitter taylor that's right it's a different taylor mm -hmm. it's true it's true uh i don't know if like <laughs> I enjoyed Sky 2. Sky 2 and Cold Steel 2 are just like the pinnacle of those series, I think. It's cool. Like, playing Cold Steel 4, though, I'm like, Taylor, this is definitely not a Taylor game. Taylor would hate this. This is just <laughs> a bunch of nonsense to Taylor. But me, I loved every second of it. I was like, that's good. Because it was, it literally was the end game of Cold Steel. For because every, everybody was here, it was Cold Steel Ultimate. This man literally said this ain't no Avengers End Game. I'm like, yeah, okay, bro. okay, okay. So bro. explain, your, ex, bro, explain yourself on that one. What do you mean by that? I, I not. I mean, obviously, it's all the characters coming together. In that sense, it's obviously End Game. But from, I guess, I'm mainly taking this. Excuse me, my voice cracked there. Um, <laughs> I'm mainly taking this what from what Shadow said, but. Because you did you not kind of say that you felt a little disappointed with Cold Steel 4? Because my my thought was I felt like end Avengers Endgame flawlessly builds up to this climactic ending to this saga and it like totally nails the landing. And I feel like that I mean I haven't played for Cold Steel 4, so I maybe I shouldn't have said that at all. But to me, from reviews I've read and other people whose opinions I've heard, it's like it doesn't quite come together as perfectly, I guess. Um, I'm not sure what I may have said. Um, I know I said like the um true ending was, was everything that they were trying to uh, wrap everything up and have their cake and eat it too. But um, it's still like a whole bunch of characters coming together for like a singular purpose and yeah it's no avengers endgame where it sticks to landing absolutely but it doesn't exactly fall flat on its face either so maybe i may have misled you on that one maybe hmm. i could i should have talked to you before you maybe made that video i i guess so you can clarify that part at least but um yeah i would still compare it to avengers endgame for the most i mean part. again doesn't yeah. stick to landing, i mean ring ring literally power. says Prale's characters assemble and they all appear. They all appear. <laughs> all of them. And he and he goes, and I am yep. Rich Wizard. <laughs> and then the game ends. <laughs> uh, it's, yeah, well, I, 
I mean, you need the true ending to get that that end game feel because the normal ending just ends. Stupid yeah, it just ending. ends, and you're just like, well, that's no closure at all. <laughs> because there's because the normal ending just straight up ends. Nothing is like like a bunch of plot points don't doesn't settle. Like you're like, okay, what about this? What about this? What about this? So if you don't do the true ending stuff, which is really easy to do, all you have to do is do the do all the side quests in the final act, the final act, that's all only. And they're all very mean meaningful side quests. They're not like, hey, my dog needs to walk. Can you please walk him and let him pee on that post over there? <laughs> and then when he's peeing you have to fight off some monsters. Um Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's not that it's it's like actual deep moment stuff with characters so they're all character specific side quests but yeah so that's all, all you have to do and it tells you it it doesn't it doesn't it isn't like oh you need to do this to get the true ending it, at the beginning of the final chapter it straight up tells you hey to get the real ending do all the chide quests you lazy <laughs> prick <laughs> That's why I don't understand. Like, if they wanted us to view that ending, they all they had they should have just made it the ending, and that's it. It made us do all those side quests mandatory. Yeah. Why did they have to go out of their way to have two endings? That don't make that ain't make no sense to me, man. Because like the first time around, I got the normal ending, and I'm like, I was I felt anticlimactic, and then I'm like, I'm doing the the true ending. I'm like, this boss easy as fuck though, but still it involves everybody, and I'm like. Why couldn't you do this to the first time around? What the hell is wrong with you? You ruined everything. And then you got, and then you, and then you got to load it up again to get the true true ending, which is the. Yeah, I don't know what the hell they were thinking on that one. I mean, it was still a good ending. Don't get me wrong. It's just why you have to load a game again? Like Taylor, the... we're not kidding. You have to load it again, and you get another scene after if you watch the ending again. It's weird. super weird. I did not expect it, but I wanted to watch the credits again. And then I was like, okay, it's done. That was nice credits. And then another scene later, I'm like, wait, what? And it's a huge, like, like a huge reveal. It, it's a huge reveal. I'm like, it's like, what the hell is this? Why was this behind? Why'd you have to load it again just to see this? This. Oh, that, no <laughs> it was pretty much like the saying, it was pretty much the main bad guy saying, the next, the next plan is the end, <laughs> and they revealed that. And better, they revealed, man? and they revealed. Well, they revealed who the who the grandmaster is. It was Reen. It was the whole, the whole time. I knew. I actually have a theory on this. I want to talk about it in the spoiler cast. I think I saw that. And I'm like, oh my gosh, they are actually doing this. This no way. This is crazy. But yeah, what were we talking about? Uh, oh yeah, video. Your video. Yeah, Taylor's bum ass video <laughs> that I'm wrong <laughs> about, probably. No, 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 you, no, no. no you make no, some yeah. really good points. No, it, it's all in your opinion. It, it's not yeah. like what you said wasn't exactly wrong on any front. It's not exactly right. It's not exactly wrong. It's just it's it's all it's all it's all, <laughs> it's all, it's all subjective. I just say this: you got guts making that video. Because I sure as hell gonna talk like I, I don't want to talk about Yakuza like a dragon because I know I got the Yakuza fan base at my neck. Even even if I like like break it down so terribly well, they'll still come down my neck. So that's one of the reasons I just won't do it. I wanna I wanna do a Tales of Symphonia video. I mean yeah. it's gonna I I have an idea and it's gonna it's it's yeah, it's gonna be I think it's gonna be funny. It's just it's very simple. It's just, 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 it's just a video about why I don't like Tales of Symphonia. That's all it's gonna be. Like, uh, like one of my main points for my Yakuza video would be, it's probably a good Yakuza game, Yakuza game, whatever, but it's a terrible JRPG. Um, I think you should actually, you should actually make that video. I don't think, I don't think you would get as crucified if you say it like that. If you plan the video like that. Yeah, like it, it. It's gotta be something I'm really passionate about doing, and that and and really to make sure I don't get as hit at that much in the video, I have to play the game <laughs> over again. Because I understand, I remember most of the major story points, especially the ones I have a problem with. But but in the early going, I'm kind of iffy on some things. So 
I don't know. I got, I'll have to play the game over. Or at least watch some cutscenes online. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that, that ending grind is a little much. So I hear you. And it's the combat def- can definitely get grading after a while. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. The combat was fine the way that it was. It was definitely some of those difficulty spikes that. That okay, the Yakuza fan base are all gonna be like, yeah, it's, it should be this difficult because of th- this character. Yeah, I get it, but still, you could just be proceeding normally and you're like 20 levels behind. This doesn't make any sense. But I will say this: I probably played the game wrong because I looked at other people's playthroughs, I looked at other people's stuff, and for at least one of the difficulty spikes, they were way ahead of me when it came to level. So I don't know what I did wrong. Like, I played it normally. I went from point A to point B to point C. I was level 30. They were, like, level 40, maybe 43, 44, 45. By the time they got there and their playthroughs, a couple people, the boss is level 50. I don't know what I did wrong. <laughs> hey, I'm level 30, boss level 50. I I, I don't know. Maybe I, play, I played the game wrong because people told me I didn't have to do the side stuff, which apparently I should have been doing all, all along. So, ugh, I can tell like a dragon, really. It conflicts me. There you go. Because I still think it's a good game. <laughs> so you know, you know, it's weird. <laughs> all we have to do is clip this out and make that your video. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> That's what I could do. Maybe. Maybe. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> uh, so let's move on to questions now. Now that uh, Taylor's uh, didn't commit seppuku, seppuku, suicide. <laughs> Uh, lots of questions. Lots of questions. Will Kreplin asks, "Why God? Why?" Uh, d- to what exactly? <laughs> I don't know. That's a, just, just why. why. All right. So, uh, non-silly question. When you chef asks, the most fun in a boss fight it doesn't have to be a JRPG. Uh, the one that immediately comes to mind, I got, I can't remember the name of the boss, but it's, um, it's in World of Warcraft in, oh my God, Naxxramas, I think. And it's this boss, it's fun for a healer. So this boss can only be, you can only damage him in a very short time window. Like he has these windows where he's vulnerable. And then he also has these windows when you can heal the tanks or when anybody can be healed. So for like the whole fight, you can't heal. And so you have to like really pay attention to when you have that opening and then you got to heal, 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 and you just have to be ready. So as a healer, it was really fun because I would have all these uh, macro setups. So I would have um, druids were always heal over time. So I would like have, have them go off and then have them heal all the way immediately and then do big heals, go off immediately. So I don't know. That was as a healer, that was a really fun fight. And I can't remember what it's called, but as you guys talk, I can look it up and maybe I'll remember. Let me think of a boss battle because boss battles to me are always like bullet sponges. I want to say if it's a JRPG, it doesn't have to be a JRPG, but I'll say Xenosaga episode two. No, it was that episode two? Yeah, I think episode two, the final battle against Albedo. Even though I don't think you could have you lost that battle, but it was still pretty epic with the music that played. And if we're talking about non JRPG, I think the last boss in Metal Gear Solid Revengeance Rising, whatever it's called, mm. Armstrong, like that whole game is just fun as hell. Platinum games really know, know how to make fun games, but yeah, know, that last battle, done. yeah, exactly, exactly, yes, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, that whole game, that whole game was really awesome. Um, I'm trying to think of other good boss battles. A, bo- a fun boss battle for me. Good, a good memory. I don't, I think Taylor might have been there actually. It was uh, Metal Gear Solid Three: The End. Oh, is that the old guy that you can kill by resetting the clock on your PlayStation? I think so. Yeah, I think you can kill him that way. But yeah, it's the old guy, the old sniper battle. <laughs> I just remember Travis. It just Travis was playing it, and we we're just watching him play it, and it was like a really long suspense. It was the first time playing the game, so it was a really long suspenseful uh, battle, and it was cool because you had like you had to like sit down and try to listen for him and try to find him, and it was really cool. Now, 
I enjoyed I enjoyed that experience. But until you learn that you can find them in a wheelchair, before, like a couple of moments before the battle, or a couple of, like in the beginning of the game somewhere, and you could kill them in a wheelchair and not even fight them. That's kind of cool, actually. Yeah, <laughs> and it's funny because you shoot him right, and if you miss, he starts. He's in a wheelchair. And he starts going. Like, really? He starts, like, an old man trying to go really fast in his wheelchair to get out of the way. It just looks funny. Uh, boss battles in JRPG, though. I, I of course, Waygraph. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. what, Waygraph is, like, classic. Super hard. If you don't know what to do, yeah. Even if you're, even when you're leveled up, you still, it's still difficult. Oh man, I want, I want to, I, yeah, I want to see what they did with that. Man. I want to see how hard it is. Oh, and the modded man. Oh, because oh I God. know, because I remember a way to get past it was to do auto potion and only have X potions. You, yep, that's you know, you know what auto potion does in that in that mod. It's always a normal potion. It's never X potions. Oh, ah, ah. Wow, that's yeah. brutal. So I want to see how he does it. Uh, a very memorable boss for battle for me is uh, when you fight the Lord of Calamity in Zesteria. I don't know why. Mm -hmm. I just find that that boss battle was super memorable for me. And it's just uh, what you had to do. I think it's, I can't really... Should I spoil Sisteria? How long has this been? Oh, I, yeah. It's it's yeah. just <laughs> so you're fighting. If you have like a normal a normal tales of battle, you know you're fighting the main guy, and you know it's a typical battle. And then you fight him again, the second form, and it's a completely different battle where he's like a big like wall that you have to fight. Right? He's like a giant monster that you have to fight. And what you have to do to fight him is you have to quote unquote sacrifice your seraphs. And with this gun that you, this like special weapon that you have, and once you sacrifice, quote unquote, sacrifice them, they um, um, they're not in your party anymore. They're gone. So you have to keep doing that to weaken him until you're at the very end and you're all alone. And then yeah, like you 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 hit him, yeah, you finish him off right, and then the final part of that battle. Is like the Sephiroth fight. It's kind of like the Sephiroth fight with Cloud at the end. Oh yeah. Except yeah, yeah. it's like it's it's like that, but it's not like you know you're they're fighting. It's all it is is just Tore walking slowly towards him, and he grabs this. He, it's like there's a sword in the path, and he just grabs the sword, and he's slowly just like he's like stumbling, so it's taking a long time, and he walks up to him, and the guy, and he just like says, well gotta die and stabs him <laughs> it's like that's kind of brutal do you remember do you do you remember that ending do you remember that uh Sh shadow i know i know Sh shadow oh shadow i gotta uh, be honest i do not remember that, that was the, yeah uh, just oh that was the coolest i i thought that ending was awesome it was so cool it was way worth the rpg maker you know dungeons <laughs> <sighs> I'd love to load the game up and see that. I forgot that. I want to rewatch it. Maybe my mind made it more awesome as it, you know, than it is. But I just remember playing it and I was like, "Oh, it's awesome!" And that's a huge spoiler for everyone who wants to talk. To, uh, you know, who wants to uh, play that game? Yep. Uh, Wingy Chef asks another question. Oh wait, did Shadow share? I don't think Shadow had. Oh it. yeah, duh. Uh, no, I think I did, I did share mine. Oh um, yeah, Ready Rising. Oh okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 And Sorry. then the. It sounded like I, you had another one. Wingy Chef also asks the worst game with an amazing soundtrack. The worst <laughs> game with an amazing soundtrack. That's interesting. Uh. uh hmm. I don't play bad games. I don't play games that that I think are terrible. So I, so I, care. I could say sometimes. Well, I say in Ryza, there were like a there was like two boss battle themes, and the final boss theme that had no business being so good as it was. I understand it. 
But um, as far as bad games, I got one. I got mine. Tales of Symphonia. So man, <laughs> great sound, great soundtrack. Uh, yeah. Along those lines, I would say um, Zestaria actually has a really good soundtrack. I don't like that game at all, but Z- yeah, Zestaria has an amazing soundtrack. That's where I spend all that budget. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Taylor, you your last video is a perfect example, right? Yeah, I mean, Cold Steel's got some. Bad, there's like a handful of good songs in there. Sometimes Falcom games can be hit or miss. Sometimes they're like they really phoned it in with like town themes or whatever. But sometimes it's just like they nailed it. <laughs> bad. Game. I'm trying to think of another. One. I was just thinking about this recently, actually. I don't remember. But I'm kind of with Shadow. I usually don't play a ton of games I don't like. Yeah, uh, I don't remember anything. Yeah, I, can't... I can't remember the last time I hated a, a JRPG so much and I hated the soundtrack, but I like the soundtrack. Uh, I would say Final Fantasy 13 would be another one. I didn't really like 13 at all, but it's got a pretty good soundtrack. You you like 13, you right? No, no, you might be right about that. No, you might oh, be right. oh, okay, <laughs> uh, that might be a good pick. But he, he even messed up its own like like the battle theme, like the main battle theme. They even messed it up. I don't know how they messed it up, even though it's so good, because it starts out way too mellow, and then it finally kicks in. Like one of the most epic, yeah, one of the most epic things I ever listened in my life. Starts out so mellow. Yeah, yeah. It's the bot, the boss battle theme, the boss battle theme is amazing though. Yeah, and then the. uh I don't know what it's. I think it's called like the Sunlith Waterway, that little like piano song with the. Oh yeah, yeah, blah, yeah. Blah, uh, blah 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 blah. Yeah, blah, yeah. That's one. Blah, that one's really good. I'm about to put that on one of my background music, but I'm also, I was afraid of Square Enix being dicks. Yeah, they'll get you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So next, uh, did you think of one, Shadow? Oh, you did. You did a uh, little bit. Yeah. Yeah, like yeah. Ryza. Puka Lakonk asks, what two JRPG protagonists would you each, would each of you want to watch fight against each other to the death? And who do you think would win? <laughs> hmm. That's interesting. Like, um, I'll fight to the death because I hate them? I don't know. Just, or... just protagonists you want to see fight to the death. Uh, I'll say a meal from um, Tales of a Symphonia Dawn New World <laughs> and Noctis. So, from Final Fantasy characters Fantasy. that you don't want to see anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm I'm saying straight up, I hope Noctis wins. <laughs> hmm. I'm trying to think here. I would say... Reen and Saray, and I don't care who wins. They're like the they're like the same damn character. They're like the same character. <laughs> hmm. uh, Not really, but um, I just had one. <clears throat> okay, okay. Lloyd from Symphonia versus Rex from Xenoblade Two. They're they they look exa- they look very similar. And they both fight with the. But Rex is gonna win because he's gonna win with the power of friendship. <laughs> yeah, pretty yeah. much. <laughs> he has his blades with him, right? That's yeah. Right. He has more help. We'll beat them with the power of friendship. I was gonna say like Ramza versus someone, but I'm like Ramza is just a normal knight, and any of these protagonists will just destroy Ramza because he's just a normal knight. <laughs> Who's Ramza? Yeah. <laughs> uh, he's the uh, main character in Final Fantasy Tactics. Ah, uh, I don't remember that game. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Smashmas asks, "Who are some of your favorite party members you use throughout Cold Steel, and why?" Oh, I'll pass please. on this one. <laughs> Laura, that's it. That's all I have to say. I would continue to use her. She and you have be... terrible taste in the game. How do you pick Laura? Oh, 
God. Laura is so good in the first Laura, game. Laura is absolute. Not trash. I'm not going to say trash. She just low tier. And Elliot is a pretty good healer. Wait, no, yeah. Elliot's broken, especially in the first game. Look, you got to use him. He's so good. Uh, Laura has some good bonding events in Cold Steel 4, though. She turns into she. Oh, now she turns play. into a real sweetheart. Well, now I gotta play them all. <laughs> uh, I would say I use Emmer a lot. I use Muse, Reen, of course, because he was pretty much a CP machine, just reimbursing that CP. Uh, uh going back maybe Cold Steel one and two again with Emma, Gaius. I get use them because I liked them. Uh, I think that's about it. I don't care for uses. I don't care for Machias. <laughs> Let's say they're bad. I just didn't care for their playstyle. I didn't care for them as characters uh, either. I never used them. I never did any of their bonding events. Yeah. I did nothing with them. Yeah, exactly. Which is sad because I think in um, Cold Steel 4, they both had pretty good bonding events. I had to reload the game constantly to get mm -hmm. them, but it was, it was worth it. Worth my time. Uh, who else? That's pretty much it. Emma Muse, Sarah. Sarah was great. Oh. Fee. Fee was always using a being an evasion tank. That was great. So in Cold Steel, in Cold Steel fun. one, I always was happy when I had Gaius because I always made him have evasion like eighty percent. So he would always like evade everything, and then he would counter right because he is a spear, so he has longer range. And I had a quartz that made all counters crit. So he would always crit on a counter. And so that's instant uh, BP, right? Or what are they called? Burst points? Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah, burst points. So that, that's... But then... Sarah was able to be in my party. So <laughs> Sarah has been in my party 100%. When I could have her in my party, she was always there, and I made her into an evasion machine, and she would just always evade everything. And since she has a gun and a sword, she could counter farther. So I always did the whole counter, crit counter with her. And then she has an ability to uh, suck all the enemies into into the middle. So I would do that with her, and then Reen would go next, and he'll just use Gale, and it would kill everyone instantly. It was just a great combo. <laughs> so so nice. Sarah, and then always used Fee, and then in Cold Steel 3 and 4, I always used Muse, because Muse is awesome. Even though she's a huge flirt, she's, she, she's thirsty. very thirsty, but she's awesome that way. She's just a very fun character to build, because she you can make, you can break her. Oh, this make her cast spells constantly. Yeah. She would, like, Taylor, so you make her cast a spell. I think uh, Shadow made her in three, where she would just cast a spell and then instantly go again, or ca instantly cast a spell and instantly go again. So she just cast, like, a bulk bunch of spells in a row. Yep. So you could build her in a way to do That's that. Nice. And I did that with her in Cold Steel 4, and all she did was just to do the basic first spell, and she would spam it like six times in a row, and she would always crit and do like a bunch of damage, and so the bosses would just go down instantly, like really fast. It was great. It was it's fun to build them. Like it's fun to build characters. Uh, Fee, and that's it. Those are my those are my go to people. Um, and then I always used I always use new class seven. Uh, Yuna and what's her what's her face? You know the one. Yeah, Altina. yeah, Altina. Uh, Will Kreplin asks: Final Fantasy came out thirty three years ago, one third of a century. Whether you like the series or not, it's undeniable that it's impacted the industry and genre. How do you think JRPGs have benefited and, and been held back by the series? That's a loaded, it is question. A very loaded question. I don't know where to start. <laughs> I can say that it's it, the good thing about it is that it brought JRPGs to the forefront, especially Final Fantasy VII. It brought it to mainstream and during the PS1 era. Um, what it's done now, what is the bad things that it's done? It's now 
the mainstream GRPG, you know, series. So anything it does, it always sells millions and millions of copies, even though it's not really JRPG anymore. Like, doesn't like it's not really the forefront of JRPG ness anymore. And I think it's like I miss the good old days where it's not overly produced. Like I think it's just like overly produced, where it's like super cinematic effects out the wazoo takes seven years to come out you know if they just made a final fantasy that's just like classic simple jrpg turn based taylor i think it would sell a lot they have that it's called uh, um it's called bravely default and Octopath. oh no i'm just saying that they, they just knew the final fantasy use the final fantasy name you know they made a final fantasy yeah, that way I classic with you know typical typical jobs and everything, I think it would sell a lot. I don't know about that, Chief. <laughs> okay, it won't it won't sell as much as it sells you know normally. I'm just saying it's it would sell it would sell well and be well received with the typical JRPG community. True. Sure. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think. Uh, how has it been? Has it benefited and held back? I think J- it's benefited JRPGs, like you said, because it brought it to the the genre to the masses, and we got more of them. So I think that's obviously a good thing. Um, but I I don't know if this is fair to say, but I almost feel like the genre can ride with how Final Fantasy is doing, and, and the reason I say that is because if you think back on the PS3. That's like when Final Fantasy, like they were the first bad one that in a while that people really didn't like. And the PS3 was like the worst generation for JRPGs, like ever. So, but you know, I think Square is back on the right path with 16 and 7 remake. And so, I don't know, it's it's hard to say. But I think in a weird way, like when it messes up, it also leaves an opening for other games to emerge. And I think like Persona is a good example of that. You know, like we never, the weirdly weird thing about uh, Final Fantasy not being turn-based and Square not making turn-based JRPGs, it's not like people stopped enjoying them. They just stopped making them, you know? So, you know, here comes Atlas, super crazy art style, over the top, um, fun gameplay, fun characters, and it's like, oh, okay. Well, if you don't want this segment of the fan b- of the player base, we'll take them. You know. But I would, oh, and I would yeah. love to see Square take on turn base, though. I would just love to see it. They, okay, I know, I know, know. and they've done, they, and they, they've really? done a really good job. I would love to see it them do it with a you know a high budget title. I, I think me and uh, Shadow are in agreement. I just don't think that's ever going to yeah, happen. Yeah, no, again. sadly. I, I think we're too far gone. <laughs> yeah. I think Dragon Quest is as the best you're going to get. Because those yeah, games are exactly. pretty high budget. Yep. Um, but, yeah. They're stuck in his roots. <laughs> if Dragon Quest ever went action, that would be the end of turn-based. You know, like, forget <laughs> it. <laughs> I think that would be the end of Dragon Quest. Yeah, Dragon, Dragon Quest would die. Also true. Yeah, oh. also true. <laughs> oh, that's why side games exist because Dragon Quest Warriors and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Yeah, exactly. Yep. I was gonna say another bad thing that uh, Final Fantasy did is uh, they uh, threw Tales under the under the bus. You know, Tales was a, a vastly superior game in the PS One era. And uh, it never got its it never got its recognition in the West just because of Final Fantasy. And, no, and you know gonna... that's you know that's true. <laughs> really? It totally isn't. I don't agree. No, with no, that no, at no, all. no. All right, I'll play. I, I, I don't know if no, I agree. No, with no, that. no, 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 no. I'm <laughs> sorry. Not not the whole part where it's vastly superior. I'm sorry. I'm talking about it got overshadowed. Therefore, it didn't get as popular, and we didn't get as many games. I still don't believe because, that. <laughs> because we didn't get we get, we didn't get Fantasia, we didn't get all the PS2 the great the PS2 greats, and then for some reason suddenly in the PS3 era, you know when 
JRPGs are down. Then we started getting every single Tales game. That's because the demand was finally there after so long. Because there was a drought for JRPGs for a while there when the PS3 generation started. That's all because we had like, was Tales games on PS3, pretty much. It was like Tales and Nino Kuni, yeah. that was it. <laughs> and, uh, and Final Fantasy 13, all three of them. Oh, God. People swear by 13 too. I'm there. That's the only one I haven't played, but um, I beat 13 bad. Lightning Returns is like embarrassing. Damn. <laughs> it, like the production value for a mainline Final Fantasy game, like it's embarrassing. Damn, really? I don't even know. Because I played, I played 13 too. I thought it was okay. Um, I just didn't, I wasn't interested enough to go and play Lightning Returns. So, Taylor, find the picture of the dog and show it on the, on the Discord. Oh, dude. Hold on, let me see if I can find this thing. I think there's a comparison where it's like it shows a PS1 dog. I think it's a PS1 or a PS2 dog. And then it shows this PS3 dog. And it looks way worse. Like a hundred times worse. Oh my goodness. I didn't realize it was that bad. I guess I didn't pay attention. I think it fell. It, it was like uh, it fell into the trap or into the problems that Final Fantasy VII Remake had. Where the main cast looks amazing. Like the main cast looks awesome, mm. but then the NPCs kind of like, you know, they got the dregs and don't look as good. Yeah. But this was like way worse. <laughs> like on quick glance, this doesn't look too bad. Well, yeah, it doesn't. The, I mean, there's the angles are there's just like just hard angles on a PS3 game, dude. It's so bad. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't remember that picture yeah, from back yeah. in the day. Oh my man. god! What that's a P- that's a PS3 <laughs> game, man. That's a PS3. Oh my god! <laughs> what are they doing? Right? See? I know that's minor. I know that's not an M- that's an NPC, but still, Jesus Christ, man! What happened here? <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. Good old days, man. Good old days. <clears throat> Let me see. Surreal Killer asks, what are Maddie and Connor up to? Any chance of including them in a spoiler cast or guesting on a future show? Connor has multiple times. Taylor's actually here. Uh, it was with us when he asked. He said it. it's like he's. He wants to join us some, like, you know, one of these times just, just to hang out, just to talk about Jerry Cheese. I kind of want him to join just to talk about the Final Fantasy Tactics game because he doesn't play that many games anymore because he focuses on uh, uh, painting and tabletop gaming. But he does, he's still, he's still into Jerry Cheese. He just, you know, just doesn't find the time, he doesn't have the time to do it as often. And uh, Maddie doesn't play Jerry Cheese anymore, like, literally. She just plays WoW. So I don't know. Wow, yeah, monster. Even that, she really plays that. Really? Yeah. I wonder if she'll play the new one. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, she has, she has, wow. she has Cold Steel three, and she has Cold Steel four. Hasn't opened them. Hasn't touched them. Hasn't even played Persona four Royal or Persona five Royal. This is like okay, well, we're done. It's a sad, sad indeed. It's over. She was super into it for that period that she joined us, and then disappeared from the world. So maybe if she ever played Cold Steel 3 and 4, she could be on, but not going to happen. Mm-hmm. Next one. Just found a good one. SL, the FMA, asks, Hey guys, I've been recently thinking of the first couple RPGs I played growing up and realized some of them I never finished but was thinking about returning to. The first two RPGs I played were both on GBA, Metabots, Meta B version, and Mario, Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga. What are some of the first RPGs you played and never finished, but would like to someday? Hmm, that's a good question. Um, most of the ones that haunted me for a long time, I beat. But the only one that's really hanging there is um, Xenogears. Ooh. Yeah, because I beat all the old Final Fantasies. I beat Tactics. I finally beat Chrono Cross. Um, I beat... I'm trying to think if there was another one. 
Nine, nine and Chrono Cross haunted me for a long time, but I finally beat those. But yeah, Xenogears is really the only one I can think of. You're gonna have to really bite the bullet to you know play that. They get through that game, and it's good. Yeah. It's good. It has a fun battle system and everything. I think you would enjoy the battle system. I just the PS one ness of that game. I don't know if you could do it. I mean, if you put your mind to it, you could do yeah. it. But I don't know if you want to. You know, if you would want to you know get into it yeah no i know what you mean yeah it's it, it requires like a, a dedication because there's like there were some that i would slog through and i was like oh, i don't really i'm not really having fun with this but i want to finish it but yeah because i'm kind of at this point right now in life where i'm like you know if i'm not having fun with something there's like so many other games that i know i would enjoy so it's i have like nothing to prove to anybody anymore i don't really care about stuff like that so now it's just like oh not enjoying it and eh, i'm done mm-hmm. uh, me yeah. um the jrpgs i think i've beat all my childhood jrpgs now because back in the day back in the early t- 2010s that's when i started getting back into the jrpgs and i started playing all the ones that i had as a kid and i beat them all i want to get i want to play lunar 2 because I remember when I was a kid, Khan mm. was really into that game. I never, I never really tried it. I remember playing it one time at his house, but never really got into it. So Taylor, the next time you come over, you come down, bring your Lunar Two, and I'll borrow it. All right. Yeah, I'm definitely not playing that anytime <laughs> soon. So. <laughs> um. Yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, now I'm just playing the games from the past, but the ones that weren't in my past. You know, you get what I'm saying. Like I'm, I'm playing older yeah. games, but I didn't play them as a kid. I just want, I just want to, see, you know, I just want to experience the classics, or even not even not even the classics. I'm just experiencing JRPGs from us from yesteryear. Yeah, no, I hear, I know what you mean. I hear. What you. about you, Shadow? Have you beaten all your childhood games? Um, all the ones I actually care about. Yeah, there's really not much. I want to. Uh, no, I can't really think of any. I'm trying to think PS One games that I really. No, it's really not anything else. There was there was ones in the past that I didn't play for the longest time, and I finally got around to doing in the early two thousands, like um Chrono Trigger, and um Zeno Gears. But I played those all already. Yes. Uh. Yeah, it's pretty much that's like yeah, the ones I actually care about, I really I beat them all already. And actually feminine I played at first. Yeah, I beat them all already. You're yeah, you're nice. just like me. We all we all had that er, we had that itch back in the day and we're like, I want to play my childhood JRPGs. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Uh Quartacha asks, What are the games you are waiting for the most in twenty twenty one? We actually already answered that during this podcast. I did. Yeah. Uh, Dari Sham asks I play different types of games seasonally in the winter I like to play long story based games like Dragon Quest in the summer I'm usually outside more so I play lighter RPGs that I can play in small chunks do you have the same do you do the same or is it any game on the table at any point of the year I don't do not do that at all any game on the table <laughs> any time of the year I don't know what that's about how the freak what what is wrong with you I'm playing <laughs> 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 oh, <my goodness>. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't. I just don't get that. I just don't get that. You guys go ahead. I, I, I don't really. I don't do that. The only thing I know, Nick probably has the same answer. But like when it's rainy time, it's like ah, oh, that's like the cozy memory time to like ah, uh, time to play a JRPG. Um, but but also I have this like yearly tradition that I haven't like done as much lately. But for a good like three or four years running, when it would come time for Christmas break, I would always be like, all right, I'm going to start an, an RPG. It wasn't always a JRPG, but I would do an RPG and I would just like marathon it. And like I'd play it all day, every day. Um, like one year it was Dragon's Dogma. The next it was Skyrim. The next it was uh, some Final Fantasy or Pokemon or something. But y- usually I, I kind of try to marathon a... Um, some kind of I'm ready you tr- I'm ready you tried to do Chrono Cross. 
Yeah, I, I mean, I eventually beat that. I just don't remember if that was the game that I did that one time. But this year, I guess it was Persona 4 Gold, but not really. I only put in probably like six or seven hours. So, yeah, this year I didn't really do it because uh, this Christmas break was a little... I had to work on my cousin's... Oh, man, I got to write that down. I have to send him his wedding <laughs> video. Um <laughs> But, um, but yeah, I did that. And then it was, you know, it was trying to run around, trying to see everybody. Um, but, uh, yeah, not, not much this year. I, I want to try to get back into that, but as I get older, that may not happen, but, um, Nikolai, I'm, I no, not really. Um, I remember like whenever it rains, it always is like, ah, it's cozy times, time to play some, some games typical i don't know why that is in like you know installed in us taylor but it's just when it rains i feel like playing rpg maker or something like that i don't but that's what i feel like um back in the day it wasn't really a season but whenever i felt depressed or down i played horror games don't don't question that logic it just that's how i felt that's (laughs) what i wanted to do and it always I'm feeling down. Let me blow zombies head. No, not even like <laughs> playing like Silent Hill stuff, man. In the thing. That thing. Um, yeah. That's the. What about Tahoe? I mean, that's sort of a seasonal thing. Tahoe. Right? That. Yeah. Well, back in the day, I used to, you know, have a JRPG moment. Recently, I have not been doing that. Uh, Tahoe. One year was was Persona Four. Another year was Grandia Two. Another year is Grandia One. It's it's mostly like replaying games over there, except for mm. Persona Four Golden. That was the first time I actually played it. Now, oh my gosh, that's I got so into it that I was playing it in the snow. I was sitting in the snow with my Vita playing it. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. Uh, yeah, that's the only thing I do. Rain. Rain is perfect. Is perfect gaming weather. Yep. Or I should say California rain because I don't know how rain is in your states. Rain is like a weekly occurrence here. <laughs> <laughs> but is it like nice calming rain or is it like all fall down at once rain? Uh, a little bit of both. I mean, it rains hard here. Some, in the summer, we get lightning storms. It's crazy. Yeah. In, like every morning, right? Mm-hmm. Uh... <laughs> Uh, what phrases from games, movies, TV, etc. have you incorporated into your speech bank? That's from Smash Miss. I mean, definitely the power of friendship, right? We say that a lot. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, uh, from games, TVs, and movies. Uh, there's so much um, stuff that we say that are just from shows and that I, I think I think oh, it's man. so ingrained in us now that we don't even remember where it's from. The one that me and Nick say a lot is what up, what up, what up. and that's from uh, I think it's from the Good Burger movie is what that's originally from. <laughs> and that's funny because that wasn't even from watching Good Burger. That's from watching a review of Good Burger. <laughs> I think you're right. We just had a, I think we had the nostalgia uh, critic on one time when we were eating dinner. Oh yeah, <laughs> it was just it was like that's true. A lot, I mean, a lot of basketball quotes. Um, <laughs> man, basketball is like, that's so quotable. Yeah, but you're a little bitch. Yeah. <laughs> I am not a little bitch. Yeah, but you're a piece of shit. I am not. <laughs> God, if, for anybody listening, if you have not seen basketball, it's so funny. It's like one of my favorite movies. It's so good. Um, uh, <laughs> we like to, tr- oh. don't judge us, people, what we... Oh, we have a lot of quotes from YouTube poops. Oh my god, <laughs> that is yeah, it's some yeah. vulgar stuff, and we just say it like completely out of nowhere. Yeah, the SpongeBob ones weirdly yeah, enough yeah. the worst. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta kill him. You had to kill him. Yep, you kill. Yep. <laughs> uh, yeah, you won't, you won't, you won't hear that from us. <laughs> these podcasts maybe you're in streams yeah but yeah what about you shadow anything 
Any quotes that you like to do? Uh, uh, probably, um, you had my curiosity, but now you have my attention. That's mm. pro- that's from um, Django Unchained. Mm, okay. Uh, I quote a lot of movies every single day, but that's the one that I always use a lot. Can't remember any at the moment. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard to think of them on the spot. You know when you said the water one, the thing the first thing that popped into mind was yeah. would be nice. Oh uh, yeah, and SpongeBob. SpongeBob. Uh, it's a perfect one to end on. Uh, Spaghetti asks, "Any big plans for GSP in 2021?" Uh, hopefully we'll get bigger and have more people join and listen. That's the only thing I'm planning on it. I don't. I personally, I would like to get more spoiler cast going because those typically get a lot more views. So, you know, that would just bring more people in. So that would be a a goal I would like to have a strive for. The tricky part is all three of us have to have played the game and have beat it in like a relatively short amount of time, which doesn't happen all that often. So that (laughs) makes it. And as we you know, explained very clearly in this episode is that Taylor's taste is all over the place, so it's hard to get him to play certain games. Yes. Like, well, we okay. can talk about maybe Yeast, Yeast 9, maybe. I was just going to say, yeah, we're all going to play oh, Yeast yeah. 9, right? Yeah. Probably okay. by the end of February we should be able but to do that. Yeah. one person doesn't get review codes. I mean, <laughs> So you have to wait. You no, have, you, you have, you have to wait for me. <laughs> That's fine. I don't even know when we're getting them. I mean, I, I, well, I don't know if I should be saying anything on the podcast. I'll, we'll, I'll yeah. talk after. <laughs> <laughs> uh, another idea I wanted is like I kind of want to do like little, like short, short segments. They don't replace episodes. It's like you know, we talk about a topic and then we just post that up. It's like a little 10, 20 minute thing that we talk about. I don't know. That popped in my head. Something we could do. Uh, more guests. Hmm. Yeah. Let's bring back. More bring back the good. classics. Bring back Ben. I was actually thinking about having somebody on to talk about Taylor's video, but um, I'll probably do that on my podcast. <clears throat> we should bring uh, Bow on. I think it'd be fun to have him on. Oh yeah, we could ask him. Yeah, sure. Why not? Yeah, when he when you're not doing HPMP. Yeah. He plays similar games. Is that the is that is he the the trails expert? Who thought who thought I was Taylor? Oh uh, no, I think you talk about the other Riku. guy, Riku. Oh, he's yeah. a trails expert. I remember, he's like, Are you the guy who doesn't like trails? Like, no, I like the guy I like trails. <laughs> that was funny. I like how I have a reputation now. Oh, you're the guy that doesn't like trails. <laughs> Uh, yeah. So more guests. Uh, yeah, it's gonna be hard now though. That fabled Aaron Fitzgerald and Yuri episode that never is, you know. No, there's yeah. something. She, yeah, he's there's too popular th- now, or he's too big. Name. That was gonna happen, guys. Back in the day, way back, we were gonna have that episode. That was before Spider Man, but then he's Spider Man now. Forget about it. You're gonna have Yusuke and uh, Chie on. Yep. So yeah, thanks for listening to our first episode of 2021, and there's going to be a lot more in the future, and if you liked what you listened to, we hope you would subscribe and follow us on all our platforms, and join our Discord, because our Discord is popping, and always fun to chat with you guys. So, thanks for everything, and we'll see you later. Bye. Peace.